This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ravel Germany's 135th scale ATF Dingo, Kinetic's latest 148th scale Kefir, Bronco's 135th scale Italian CB333 Tankette, a pair of books about building dioramas, and a trio of aircraft decals. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kidwell. And our first item today is Ravel Germany's 135th scale Dingo 2. It's an all new kit. The ATF in the title translates as All Protected Transport Vehicle. Tim won't say All Schutz Transport Fartzoi. Not after the beating I took for Nashorn in the last NPRD. It's N A S H. O R N, which in English, at least in my English, it comes out as Nashorn. But I'll admit I was wrong, so I'll just stick with Old English and the Romance languages. A2? No, I'm good. I like my German. I took a year and a half of it. All right. Anyway, tell them about the dingo. The dingo is used in, by the armies of Germany, Austria, Luxembourg, Norway, Belgium, and the Czech Republic. Strangely enough, not Australia, it being called the dingo and everything. Well, you know, what are you going to do? They have the Bushmaster. Is it the same vehicle? Not exactly. It's similar class, four wheels, armored protected, you know. <laughs> Whatever. All right, Ravel's kit <laughs> represents the Dingo 2A2 patrol uh, version, the one that was sent to Afghanistan with the German army. Molded in the dark green plastic, typical to Ravel Germany's military vehicles, the kit is crammed with details. That detail starts with the chassis, engine, suspension, and drivetrain. Well-molded vinyl tires give the model traction. Detail abounds inside with fully appointed driver's cab, including seats, controls, and communication equipment. In back, the crew compartment has more seats, gear, and stowage areas. Separate doors look as if they can be posed open to show off the interior. The remote weapon station on the roof is movable. The parts are nicely molded with sharp weld seams and well-defined non-skid patches. Decals provide markings for three German dingoes, including two in Afghanistan and one Czech vehicle. All in all, this is an awesome addition to the growing range of modern armor kits available to modelers. Our second kit today is Kinetic's 148th scale F21A Lion. Uh, this is Kinetic's second release of an Israeli Kafir. The Kafir was developed in Israel when they installed GE J79 engines into French Mirage fighters. This kit represents the early C1 variant with small canards. The U.S. Navy and Marine Corps both used C-1s as aggressor aircraft. They're the ones that designated the, the Kafir, the F-21. The gray plastic parts feature slightly heavy engraved panel lines and rivets that should look okay under a coat of paint. The cockpit includes a five-part ejection seat, instrument panel, a decent tub with raised console details, and controls. Other highlights include detailed landing gear bays, full intake trunking that ends with a fan, detailed exhaust can, and posable flaps and canopy. Underwing stores include three types of fuel tank and two Python air-to-air -air missiles. Cartograph decals provide markings for two Israeli kafirs and one U.S. Marine F-21A Lion. Kinetics made a good-looking model of a very interesting aircraft. Our third kit today comes from Bronco. It's the 135th scale CV333 tankette. Now these little tanks, they entered service with the Italian Army in 1933. The C, more than 300 of the 33s were built before they were replaced by the CV-35. This isn't the first kit of this diminutive vehicle that Bronco has brought out. Uh, a lot of CV-33s were rebuilt to CV-35 standards and that's what this kit represents, armed with twin 8mm guns. Now, this model might be small, just barely four inches long, but Bronco is, goes huge with detail. Molded in tan plastic, the parts provide a full interior. Yeah, there's an engine for the rear compartment and a drive shaft and transmission for the driver's compartment. Driver controls, fuel tank, storage units, and machine gun breaches round out the interior. The engine and fighting compartment hatches can be posed open. The attention to detail extends to the complicated suspension and Lincoln length tracks. Photo etch metal provides pedals, visors, a heat shield, and straps. The kit features markings for three tankettes, one Italian from 1944, a German vehicle in Italy in 1943, and an Italian tank in Libya in 1940. I find this tiny tank strangely attractive and it looks like it should be a fun build straight out of the box. 
strangely attractive. Dioramas may be the ultimate, ultimate expression of modeling. At the very least, a diorama will give a vehicle, aircraft, ship, a figure, some sort of context. At best, it tells a story. It demands attention without necessarily requiring an explanation. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a look at a couple of books that uh, should provide you with lots of inspiration and ideas to build better dioramas. First up from Combat Publishing, we have Building Dioramas by FSM author Chris Morosco. Now, Chris has been building dioramas. He's been modeling for years. He started as a kid, and then in the 1990s, he was able to turn his passion for building models into a full-time gig. His dioramas and models have been gracing the tables of contests for years. Chris details all aspects of modern diorama design and construction, including concepts and composition, groundwork, figures, airbrushing, and resin casting, then demonstrates those techniques over five projects. This is Down and Dirty How To with hundreds of color photos and illustrations. Scale Model Handbook, Diorama Modeling 1, from Mr. Black Publications, takes a different tack. Rather than starting with basics, this book uses nine projects to demonstrate different ideas and techniques for a variety of diorama concepts. The subjects cover an array of historical periods and diorama forms. The projects include detailed paint and color info, groundwork, and weathering. Both books give would-be diorama builders plenty of ideas, inspiration, and techniques. Finally, we have three aircraft decal sets that grabbed our attention. First up, from Caracal, a sheet featuring nine options to mark 148 scale U.S. Air Force T-38As. Three wear white and insignia blue, and three are all white. The remaining three are camouflaged, one in an experimental 1980s two-color scheme, the other two in multicolor aggressor schemes. The instructions have comprehensive notes and color callouts. Yeah, they should be the perfect companions to the talons we saw in the last rundown. Extra Decal brings us the second sheet with nine options for 172nd scale de Havilland vampires in foreign, meaning not British, service. There are some great looking fighters here from Sweden, France, Canada, Norway, South Africa, and New Zealand. The instructions include four view drawings and color callouts. Great addition for the numerous 172nd scale vampires out there. The last sheet holds special appeal to this airliner modeler. Maestro Decal's first sheet provides three marking options for 1 to 144 scale Swedish C-46s. It includes two liveries for charter airline Transair Sweden and one for a transport used during peacekeeping operations in the Congo in the early 1960s. Great options for Platz's terrific small-scale commando. Look for a review of the Dingo and an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. That's right, and you can see more of these and other new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting finescale.com and watching the NPRD. I'm Tim Kidwell. I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. A hundred of them were built. Uh, oh, crap. Okay, I stumbled through this, and then you, <laughs> you take your superior attitude elsewhere. <laughs>